Well, first things first, this video in no way, shape or form is intended to poke fun at Chelsea supporters or Chelsea Football Club. I mean, I'm a Man United fan, so trust me when I say that we know very well how people with glass houses should not cast stones at others. No, instead, this video is merely a collection of my observations about Chelsea. For example, Todd Bowley and Iqbali, when they bought Chelsea, they bought it through an equity. And to simplify it, what that means is that it's a big pot of money that is intended for investment purposes. For example, if you had, let's say, $10 million to invest and you know the banks are not going to give you uh, the favorable rates that you want. So they go to one of these equity firms or investment firms or whatever you want to call it. And uh, they will tell them that we've got $10 million to invest. And then the investment firm will say that, hey, we've got a pot of three billion dollars and with your ten million dollars you cannot do much but we'll put your ten million dollars in that pot of three billion dollars and with that money we're gonna buy chelsea and you know chelsea they're gonna go up and up and up they just won the champions league it's one of the biggest clubs in england they play in europe every year so while it's not exactly the way glazers bought man united by putting the whole of Manchester United as a collateral, while the, the semantics or the wordings may be different, but essentially it's the same thing. Because that person who's put that $10 million or, or the other people who've put that $3 billion, they're going to want to see the returns. And how long do you think before they start asking questions? Now, the only saving grace for Boli and Iqbali is that I don't think they only had that $3 billion. I'm sure they can shuffle things around. And if people want to back out, they can refund their monies. But not a sustainable model is what I'm saying. But perhaps what is even more scarier is the fact that Boli and Iqbali seem to be cut from the same cloth as Glazers, i.e. these guys, I have no doubt, have done very, very well for themselves. But the problem is that these finance people, they think that because they have done it in the finance world, they can do it anywhere. And they ignore the fact that running a major football club is a completely different beast. And that is the first scary resemblance. Looking back at the last decade, that's exactly what Blazers and their cronies did. You know, thinking they got it figured out. They'll change managers when they want to. They'll buy players that they want. And, and perhaps the most scariest thing is how they are overriding the managers. So they've had three long-term managers, these new owners. Three very well-regarded managers in Tuchel, Potter. Potter admittedly was up and coming, but he was the Desarby before Desarby. And Pochettino, very well-regarded manager. And they are now overriding their authority. They are in control of the players that they buy because it was very evident that Potter had no idea about Enzo and his acquisition last year. And he said as much in his press conference. That, my friends, is the biggest recipe for disaster. You cannot give these ingredients to a chef and tell him to make the best pasta in the world. It's impossible. You need to let your chef find the ingredients and come up with that pasta himself. And that is exactly what Glazers did. Remember the, the whole tussle with Mourinho. Remember Oli Gunnar. Remember Angel Di Maria, who clearly did not want to come and the manager did not want him. Glazers have spent over a billion pounds in the last decade. And the only difference is Bowley's done that in a year. But the results are the same. Ever since Enzo has joined Chelsea, he's never seen himself in the top half of the table. Lazio's goalkeeper has scored more goals this year than Mudrik. It's just terrible. And believe you me, I know this feeling all too well. All Manchester United fans know this feeling. So unless Boli and Iqbali realize that they may have reigned supreme in the finance world, but this is a completely different kettle of fish. They need to let their egos aside, find a good manager, support him all the way for at least a couple of years. In my time of watching football, I have only seen one model for success, and that is the manager being the top dog in the club. Because how you're going to achieve success is on the field, the success that matters to us fans, that is at least. And who goes on to the field? The players. And who is responsible for coaching those players? The manager. 
the players, especially in this day and age, they need to know that the manager is their North Star, that the manager is their boss. And that's the lesson that Roman Abramovich learned very early in his ownership. He brought in Mourinho, immediate, unprecedented success followed. Then he tried to shove Shevchenko into that team and they had an argument and the rest is history. And after that Shevchenko incident, at least Roman never interfered with the managers. He let them have control over the team and that is the only recipe for success. Think about Sir Alex Ferguson. Think about Pep Guardiola. These are not managers who acquiesce. So it is a very turbulent time for Chelsea. I do think Pochettino is a very good manager and I'm sure Pochettino can get a tune out of these players. And that's about it. Until you see me again, stay safe.